When describing business processes which have been modelled with BPMN, we often refer to a token which follows the process flow. This theoretical concept is described in the BPMN specification as an aid to define the behaviour of a process that is being performed. Essentially, the token follows the flow of the process as depicted with the blue circles here. At split points like exclusive gateways, the token's path is determined by the conditions on the outgoing sequence flows. Each token therefore represents an instance of the process, triggered by the start event and completing with the end event. The token concept can be helpful to our understanding of the different scenarios or paths defined in a process, and in this video we'll examine how these paths can be animated in much the same way as we've constructed on this slide, and how that can improve our documentation of business processes. As you can see, we've extended the human resources model which we've created in previous videos to incorporate a new process to onboard an employee. And this diagram shows us a representation of that process, which includes uh, three lanes for the manager, the IT group, and the employee themselves. Um, initially, what I want to do is just show you uh, a pre recorded animation so you can get an idea of what we'll be aiming towards. If I just select the onboard employee process, and in my details view up here, I can see I've got an animation path for uh, onboard employee. And we'll open that up in the animation capability of Innovator. And I'll just play the animation. And you'll be able to see that what it essentially does is replays uh, the decisions that we've made at various gateways so that we can uh, view that particular scenario, which in this case, as you can see from the name of, um, of the animation path of the scenario, is internal hire. So what we're looking at here is the activities which are carried out uh, for onboarding somebody who has uh, been appointed to a new position uh, but previously was already within the company. So that kind of animation capability can be quite useful for explaining these scenarios. Uh, so let's walk through now and uh, have a look at some of the other capabilities that are available and indeed we'll record one of these uh, animation paths so you can see how that works. Let's close the animation tool and looking back at our diagram again uh, we can see also that I've added a second diagram here for onboarding internal hire. Something that's quite useful sometimes is to actually have a static diagram which gives you a representation of that particular scenario. So what I've done is I've duplicated the onboarding diagram, um, added onto it a reference to that same process. So this isn't copying uh, that process description, it's simply a reference to it so that any changes we make in the original are reflected here. And uh, within a diagram, we can actually choose to apply a particular animation path. Uh, so therefore, we can see that only those um, events and tasks and so on that are actually relevant to the animation path that we recorded for an internal employee being uh, gaining a new position, only those particular activities are then shown with dark outlines, as you can see here. And anything which isn't actually traversed during that scenario is left greyed out, as we can see here with the sub-process HR sign-up and training. So how do we go about recording uh, one of these animations and creating this kind of scenario diagram? Let's go back to our original onboarding diagram. And if I select the process and right-click on it and then choose Animate Control Flow, I can define a new animation path. And it brings up the animation tool for me. Uh, looking very similar to that which we saw just now as we were uh, playing back the animation. Um, and what I'm able to do now is uh, using this set of buttons here, I can define the path. You can see that it's already recognized the start event. Uh, we'll just zoom in a little there, I think, so we can see things more clearly. And what we're going to do is we're going to record an, um, a scenario uh, where the new employee actually is a new employee. They've just joined the company rather than one that's being uh, assigned from elsewhere in the company. So when we're defining the path, we've got a couple of options about stepping forward or running until decision. We'll use that for now. That's the simplest thing for us to do. So initially what it's done then is it's from our start event gone to this first gateway. And we can see that it's asking us to choose an edge, to choose the sequence flow, which is going to be followed out of that. In other words, which condition is met. This is an external hire that we're considering. So we'll select that sequence flow and uh, the recorder will then continue and we'll run again until until the, the next decision is reached. So we've identified office space, we're setting up IT accounts and equipment. That merge has occurred, we appoint a mentor, we announce the new employee. We reach the start date, intermediate event, 
Um, and then again, we have another gateway asking us whether it's an external hire or not. It is, so we select that sequence flow. And uh, then when we reach a sub-process, we have an option as to whether we want to step in and, uh, and actually explore the details of that in our animation path or step over, which is what we'll do here. So the only thing that's actually going to be recorded is the fact that HR sign up and training uh, was activated. Then we run until decision again, review responsibilities. After the first week is up, the manager reviews that first week and then our initial onboarding process is complete. So we've now recorded that path, we save it and then we can close our animation tool. Now when I select the process again, we'll see now that we've got two animation paths. The one that we had in the model originally for internal hire and our new one, which by default is the name of the, uh, has the same name as the process. We just want to modify that name to represent the scenario that it's looking at, which is external hire. I might also, and in fact I do in this instance, want to uh, place a description against that using innovative specification text capability. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, select that, uh, that new path over here in the model contents using control M, click specification text, and then in the window that comes up we can add our rich text description of that particular scenario. So this particular scenario describes the process behaviour when the appointment is a new employee. Let's save that specification text. And that just means that when we come to generate some, uh, some output as an HTML report shortly, uh, we'll see that description in place. Okay, you'll remember that we had a, uh, what we're terming a scenario diagram for internal hire. We want to do the same thing now for external hire. And uh, the easiest way to do that is to copy our existing internal hire. So I've selected that diagram. And uh, either by right-clicking or by using Control-C, I can copy it and then paste it into uh, that same package in our model. And uh, it's named with a, initially with an underscore 2 on the end. We'll just hit F2 and we'll rename that so that it is indeed external hire. Now if we open that diagram, we'll see that it is exactly the same as the internal hire one we saw. It's got a reference to onboard employee and at the moment the animation path that's being displayed is for an internal employee. Uh, so somebody who's being moved into that position as opposed to being a brand new hire. So we want to change the animation path that's displayed here. So we right click on the process, process view, and instead of having onboard employee internal hire as the path that's shown, uh, we're going to instead show external hire. Okay, and you can see now how that's uh, darkened the outlines of those aspects of that path and has greyed out uh, those sequence flows for the internal, um, internal hire scenario that we pre-recorded. So now we've got our original diagram, which defines the process, and two uh, scenario diagrams, which give us different views, one for internal hire and one for external hire. Having done that, what we may want to do is to communicate this information to other people. And we can do that either by, uh, if we're in a meeting situation, we could use the animation tool that I showed earlier to actually run through the recorded uh, scenario, or we could generate some documentation, which is what we'll do now. Um, I've got a report created in my model here, which will allow us to report not only on the detail of the process, but also will uh, give us the steps that are carried out for a particular scenario. So I've selected my process here, onboard employee. I've got a button added to my uh, toolbar at the top here to fire up the document wizard. We're going to use the current selection, which is onboard employee, that process and we're going to generate uh, in HTML a collaborations and processes with scenarios report. So what that does now is it, it creates from those three diagrams that we had there uh, PNG files which are placed within HTML files which incorporate then the other details 
Uh, so the descriptions of the particular tasks and events and uh, sub-processes and so on. Um, and also the particular steps that are followed for the scenarios which we recorded in the animation tool. So here the report has opened up in my browser and uh, using the uh, kind of contents navigation view on the left hand side I can uh, explore into that, click on the process here. If we had more than one then it would uh, give us more entries on the left there. It's generated the diagram. Uh, that defines the onboard employee process we see there and as I hover over elements it displays the description of those if it's been set okay and uh, scrolling on down I can see the tasks events and sub processes or at least headings for them that take me off to separate pages which are also uh, linkable from here so if I click on tasks we can see these are the five tasks sorted alphabetically here um, which were included in our process and uh, selecting one of those shows its description and any other relevant information about it. Perhaps we're more interested in the scenarios here. If we uh, click on scenarios, we can see we've got our internal hire, external hire scenarios. And clicking on those again, we see the scenario diagram. So this is our reference to the original process, showing only the elements, or at least highlighting the elements in the path, uh, rather than uh, all of the elements in the process. And then beneath that diagram, we see the description of the scenario. And then in order, we can see the steps that are carried out. So ignoring identify office space and set up IT accounts and equipment, we've got uh, uh, from the start event through to the end event, a list of the activities which are carried out when we're onboarding an internal hire. And indeed, if we went to the external hire one again, we can zoom out in and out of the diagram and we will then see a few more steps because we've got identify office space and set up IT accounts and equipment and so on um, as additional steps in this particular scenario. So in this video then we've considered uh, tokens from a BPMN point of view and how Innovator in this instance has actually uh, implemented an animation tool based around that concept which works really nicely to allow us to record a scenario to play it back and indeed to generate static reports uh, on scenarios in BPMN models.